All right, I am here at Princeton University in New Jersey and take a look at this view. I've moved over into the shade here a little bit. Now, we have been listening to the Harry Potter series on this road trip across all 48 states. This looks like it could be Hogwarts. I mean, this campus is incredible, very old, very interesting buildings, but uh, you're not here for that. You're here to learn how Medicare works in New Jersey. So let's talk about it. I'll start with the Medicare supplement plan side of the conversation. With supplement plans, cost is always a big deal. So when a typical 65 year old is looking for a supplement plan across the country, the average is $150 per person per month. Here in New Jersey, you are right at the average, $150. For a plan N, the national average is $120. Here in New Jersey, you're at the average of $120. So exactly on the averages of the national plans here when you're looking for supplements, plan G and plan N. Now these are averages. You could see plans that are higher, you could see plans that are lower, but your averages are right in line with national national averages. Now, when it comes to supplement plans in many states, there are insurance companies that will offer discounts based on a few things. So let's talk about a few of those. There are discounts that some insurance companies are willing to provide if you have somebody in the same household with a plan with them. So it's called a household discount. Let's say that me and my spouse are both on a supplement plan with the same insurance company. That insurance company will say, hey, We'll give you a discount for having you both on this plan. Another discount to know about is called a wearable discount. If you're willing to wear a smartwatch, a Fitbit, a Garmin, and connect that with your insurance company, there are companies that will say, hey, we'll give you a discount because now we know that you're active and exercising. Another discount would be an annual discount. So you're willing to pay your premiums all up front for the year rather than month to month. There are some companies that are willing to give you a discount for that. And then there are some companies that are willing to stack these discounts on top of each other. So this is why I'm always talking about use an agent who's licensed and familiar in your state, who can not only know the supplement plan options available to you, but they can know which insurance companies have more stable rate increases. They can know which insurance companies are willing to give discounts for you so you can get coverage at the cost that makes sense for you. Nationally, the supplement plan penetration rate, so the number of people who are picking supplement plans is 21%. Here in New Jersey, it's 29%. That is the 11th highest in the country. So you have more people here as a whole or as a percentage choosing to go with Medicare supplement plans. That's not me advocating for or against these. That is just the numbers that we're seeing here in New Jersey. Your plans here are attained age plans. Remember, there are three ways that supplement plans can be issued. The first is community rated, typically start off as the highest cost. Next is issue age, typically in the middle, and then attained age. Attained age plans are based on the age that you have attained. So all of these plan types, whether it's issue age, attained age, community rated, you will see an annual increase that is just a bump to account for rising healthcare costs and, and inflation. Most insurance companies will do this every year or every other year, depending on how they're running. Attained age plans have another potential bump, and that is when you have a birthday. So if I go on Medicare at 65 and I have a supplement plan, I'm gonna have a rate for a 65 year old. Well, when I turn 66, I've attained a new age and we sarcastically call this the happy birthday increase. You'll get another little bump for being 66. And this happens every year. So you could see up to two increases for your premiums each year on attained age plans. But again, they start lower than the issue age and community rated plans as a whole. Supplement plans are very competitive here. There are a lot of insurance companies that are wanting your business. So that average there, it's pretty close. There are plans that are higher and lower, but because it's so competitive, your band or your range of supplement plans is less than what we've seen in a lot of these other states. Now, New Jersey is not a guaranteed issue state. And what that means is that you aren't able to switch from one supplement plan to another without medical underwriting. There are some states and it's a minority that have rights around guaranteed issue. And New Jersey isn't one of them, but they are in talks of making it one. And that would come in the next six to 12 months probably where they would implement guaranteed issue rights. And what this means is that during a certain time of the year, usually this is around your birthday, you'd be able to switch from something like a plan G to another plan G with no medical underwriting. Or in most states, it's you can switch from a like plan to like plan or like plan down. So a G to an N as an example, without going through medical underwriting. And the reason you would wanna do this is if your insurance company rates are increasing faster than normal or faster than the other plans, you'd be able to switch to another insurance company without having medical underwriting. But as it sits now, you would need to go through medical underwriting. What that means is that you would answer medical questions. And if you have poor health, you could be charged more or you could be denied completely Again, depending on your health. If you have good health, you can make that switch with relatively low problems. I'll finish up the supplement plan side of the conversation talking about Medicare for those who get it before you're 65. So you're getting this because you qualify with a disability, end-stage renal disease, ESRD, or ALS, commonly referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease. So in this case, with most states, you don't have a lot of protections. Either you cannot find a supplement plan, period, or you have limited letters of the supplement plans available and they're extremely expensive. Here in New Jersey, you're kind of limited to plan C and plan D. 
And the rates aren't crazy like they are in other states. It could be a little bit higher, but you're kind of limited to a few letters, reasonable rates. If you don't want these plan letters for supplement plans and you are disabled or you have Medicare pre-65, you're looking at either original Medicare only, or you could get an Advantage plan, or you could go with some sort of a coordination with an employer plan if you're working or your spouse is working and you're covered under that plan. Once you reach 65, that is a new window for you where you would be able to jump on any of the normal supplement plan letters and you would be charged the same amount as any other 65 year old. So that is a good opportunity for you to jump on these without the medical underwriting and you'd be able to get different letters. Now let's switch over to the Advantage plan side of the conversation. So with Advantage plans, a big number that we look at is the maximum out of pocket. This is your maximum risk for any given year. The national average is $5,000. Here in New Jersey, it's $7,500 is your average. Quite a bit higher than the national average. And again, this is an average, so you will find plans that are lower, you will find plans that are higher but a pretty high average there. And that coincides with the penetration rate from an Advantage plan perspective. Nationally, the Advantage plan penetration rate is 50%. Here in New Jersey, it's 39%. So significantly lower in the number of people who are choosing Advantage plans. But even with Advantage plans and supplement plans, that number doesn't add up to 100%. That means that people here are choosing other things, like again, original Medicare only, maybe you have federal benefits, FEHB, VA, TRICARE for life, or if somebody is duly eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, that's another reason why these numbers aren't adding up to 100%. You have the standard trial rights when we talk about switching Advantage plans. So this is where things get a little bit tricky if you wanna switch from an Advantage plan to a supplement plan is more specifically what I'm talking about here. Here's how you would go about doing that. There are two trial rights to know about. The first trial right is related to your 65th birthday. If you go on Medicare at your 65th birthday, that means you have your Part A, Part B, and your Advantage plan effective dates is the same date. Then you're able to try that out for 12 months and at any time within those 12 months, if you don't like it, you can switch back to original Medicare and a supplement plan without medical underwriting. Your Part A, Part B, and your Advantage plan effective dates have to line up though, and this only happens at your 65th birthday. If you go on Medicare after 65, your Part A effective date is gonna be different than the others. So again, this is around your 65th birthday. The second trial right is not around your 65th birthday. This is if you go on Medicare at any age, and the first time you go on Medicare, you choose a supplement plan first. If that's the case, if in the future you wanna try out an Advantage plan, you can switch off of the supplement plan and onto the Advantage plan, then you have a 12 month window to be on that Advantage plan, try it out, and if you don't like it, within that 12 month window, you could switch back to original Medicare and your supplement plan without medical underwriting. The other way to easily switch from Advantage to supplement plan is if you have a special election period. Now, the most common special election period is if you've moved outside of your Advantage plan's coverage area. This would warrant a special election period. You could switch back onto original Medicare and a supplement plan with no medical underwriting. There are other reasons for special election periods, but that's the most common is moving. So outside of the two trial rights and the special election period, you're left with the normal way to switch, and that would be to go through medical underwriting. Again, you're gonna to have to submit your health. If you're in poor health, you could be charged more or denied completely for a supplement plan. And this is when people are normally switching from Advantage to supplement is they wanted the no premiums of the Advantage plan, but now things are happening, health is becoming more poor, and they want the coverage of a supplement plan. Well, if your health is poor now and you're trying to make that switch, you might not get approved. So just something to think about as you're going through this. Now, this is not me advocating for or against Advantage plans or supplement plans here. It all is based on your situation. I highly recommend using an independent licensed insurance agent to help you with this. I'm not even saying you have to use us. It will never cost you anything. Just use an agent who can compare all of these plans, make sure that your hospitals and your providers are in network with an Advantage plan, or you're getting the supplement plan and those discounts that we talked about that you would want. Now, if you do wanna use us, I do have partners who are licensed and familiar here in the state of New Jersey who can help you find these plans. You can reach out to me. My email is in the description of this video, or you can go to theretirementnerds.com. We'd be happy to help. Now, at the end of all of these videos, I like to throw in a secret keyword that's just between you and me to show that you've made it this far, and then I can take the comments a little bit more seriously. So I am here at Princeton, a place of higher learning. It's actually really cool to see this place and the history here. Right behind me, this stone archway entry, uh, that's the class of 1912 that put together that entry. So that's pretty nuts. So the keyword is what was your favorite subject in school? Anything related to your favorite subject in the comments and then I'll know you've made it this far and we can go from there. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do so. It helps more than you know. I'm gonna continue looking at New Jersey and exploring it with my family. Thank you for making it this far and I will see you in the next video.